channel. So for the past month, my family has been celebrating the life of my son and reflecting on the roller coaster ride these past five years have been for us. It has been a very, very long and difficult five years. We as a family have dealt with so many emotions, including disbelief, anger, depression, regret, and a lot of healing. For those of you who don't know, five years ago, my wife Angela and I welcomed our first and only son, Leo, into this world. After 26 wonderful days, our healthy baby boy, who for reasons still unknown by the medical field, passed away in his sleep. He died from sins, which just means they literally have ruled out every possible reason for his death. There's no known reason for sins. I honestly can't believe it's been five years. I can still remember as clear as if it were yesterday the final evening we had with Leo. Every now and then, our daughters would have these princess parties. They would dress up in their finest princess dresses, eat princess dinner, usually princess spaghetti, princess hot dogs, or princess sandwiches. We would then spend time as a family watching a princess movie. However, in honor of Leo's first time being involved in these festive occasions, the girls decided that we would instead have a prince party. The most macho film they could think of was Pixar's Brave. So they got all ready and that evening we had our first and only prince party. The love and happiness we felt at that time was immeasurable. All of our hard work was finally coming to fruition and we were excited about all the fun times still to come. We had a home, good jobs, and three beautiful kids. Life seemed perfect. I'll always associate April 10th, 2013 as one of the happiest evenings I can remember. At about 1.30 a.m. on April 11th, I woke up to my worst nightmare. We had no idea, but our world would be turned upside down and changed forever. In the years since, I have replayed that entire evening in my head thousands of times. I have questioned every single minute choice I made over those 26 days. I felt like a failure. As a father, I'm supposed to protect my kids! I feel we did everything right. Everything those baby books said to do. But as the doctor would later tell us at the hospital in the early morning hours of April 11th, 2013, our son had expired. The love and care that came from everyone around us at church, at work, and in the community was more than I could have ever expected. People brought us food, condolence cards, and took time out of their lives to be with us. Some cared for our daughters so we could go make funeral arrangements. A family day of play with jumpers, kids' activities, food, and music was held at my work to raise money to help offset the cost of the funeral. Our church prayed over us and gave us so much spiritual support. Friends and family would come over every evening to support and be with us. You know, honestly, it really was a challenging time eased by a fantastic and very supportive community. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, it became apparent that we were in need of some big changes in our lives. And big changes definitely were happening. From Angela's father passing away only two months after Leo, to us opening our home and our hearts to Angela's younger half-sister so that she could go back to high school, life kept changing. We ended up selling our home and eventually moving back in with my parents, where my grandmother was living the final year of her life in incredible pain after her body had rejected a surgery. The events during that time were hard and painful. I began to gain a lot of weight after Leo passed. I was distant with others. I was lost in my emotions. I was cranky to be around. And I was sad. I was so, so sad. Leo's death had taken a toll on me both emotionally and mentally. All I wanted to do was be alone at the cemetery. The only topic I wanted to talk about was Leo. Some friends and family began to push away from us. And honestly, I didn't fight to keep them around. I was probably hard to be around at that time also. Luckily, this is when I met my good friend Josh Lawson. Josh is a wonderful guy who has a crazy backstory of his own. I've linked his blog to this video. What he has overcome in his life is truly inspiring. Josh and I would get together every Monday evening and discuss Leo as well as every other topic under the sun. We would pray, laugh, and enjoy each other's company. His friendship and our discussions really helped me to get through those tough years. I would say that it took a year and a half of complete and total self-pity 
before I came to the realization that I was not living the life I was meant to live. What I mean by this is that I began to realize that Leo wouldn't want his legacy to be that he destroyed his father's life. Instead, I flipped many of the emotions that I was having on their head and decided that I would honor my son by being the best husband, father, son, brother, friend, and worker I could be. I wanted people to know that I was living the life I wanted for Leo. Heck, I'm still doing that today. It has taken this long to finally feel like my life is back on track. And I hope my son sees that he actually inspired me to be a better person. I'm strengthening relationships with family and friends. I'm trying to be more outgoing and more positive. I am daily trying to be a better father and husband to my young daughters and my beautiful wife. My family is who I live for. A year after Leo passed, we welcomed our rainbow baby Zoe into this world. God has blessed me in so many ways and he has taken this tragic experience and strengthened me. So much has happened over the past five years that I could make another hundred videos and still only scratch the surface. Just know that everyone watching, praying, and talking about Leo with me, I love you, I thank you for caring, and I appreciate your support. I know my son's up in heaven bouncing on clouds and having a great old time. With that said, thanks for watching and have a wonderful week.